Hello! Welcome to another free e-learning tutorial from daconane.com. Today I'm going to take you through Live Binders. If you're looking for a tool that will help you to organise student work, then Live Binders is for you. The premise of Live Binders is that digital content can be organised into binders. Each binder can be sorted by tabs and within each tab you can add content or further subdivide with subtabs. Finally, all related binders can be organised into shelves of related content, great for managing students. Binders can be private or open and can be shared openly or privately via a passkey, making it great for sharing ePortfolios. So let's get into it. You can see here that I've created a new binder by clicking on the Start a Blank Binder link on the left hand menu list. It is in the new window where I set the initial information and permissions for my new binder. I can always change this later. I can name my binder, give it a brief description, categorise it and set the privacy settings. Here I can also set the access key if I want to share my binder with who I choose to. This is a great option for students to set their own key as they can always find their security key in this part of the binder if they forget it. Finally I can click on the create binder button and start to add content. Now that my binder has been created I'm in the heart of the live binder structure. As I said earlier, binders are organised around tabs and whilst this organisational metaphor will have resonance with teachers, I think it would be prudent to spend some time with students to help them understand how this branching tree storage model might work for them. By default, each binder has three tabs at the start. It is here that I think students will need help. I think they will initially create lots of top level tabs and not a branching pyramid of content as I'm going to do in a moment. Each tab has a drop down menu of options to edit the tab. I should name my tab first, but I'm going to change the colour of the tab by clicking on the bottom option here and using the colour wheel to make my colour selection. When I'm happy, I just click on the apply button. Naming a tab is easy. All I have to do is to click on the tab and highlight and delete the default text and then enter my chosen content label for my tab. I'm going to repeat this process with all of my tabs along here. As I continue to name my top level tabs, I'm going to move on and continue with the customization of my binder by picking a colour for each of my other tabs. As you can see, it is a simple process, but the colours make finding content quick and easy. Once I've done this editing, I can now start to think about adding content to each of these tabs, and this is where the brilliance of live binders really becomes apparent. Within each tab, I can choose from a range of templates to help me organise and display my content. So, let's get into creating this content. I'm going to start with my literacy tab here. On the top left of the toolbar here are all the tools I need to make new tabs, sub-tabs and add content. It is important to know that a single tab can only store a single item of added content. So the layout choice is really important as is the subsequent sub-tab structure, which is why understanding a branching tree structure is really important for students to know and understand. On this top level tab, I will choose the one column text option so that I can indicate what other content can be found in the other sub-tabs. The information here can act as a table of contents if it is a student organizing their work, or if it is a resource I'm creating, this tab might contain a task or a series of instructions to help students work their way through the content I've created for them. With my instructions completed, I can now continue down my branching tree of content and add some sub-tabs. To create a sub-tab, all I have to do is to first make sure that I am in the tab that I want my sub-tab to be in. Then I click on the sub-tab button on the top left menu and then edit my tab as before by giving it a name and a colour as I see fit. I'm going to break down my top level literacy tab into three subsequent sub tabs poetry, spelling and writing. Obviously depending on how granular I want to be with how I organise my content I can continually add subsequent sub levels to any of my tabs and sub tabs. As I do this Live Binders will display the array of differing levels within each tab only when I click on the top level tab to reveal what's within. So, if like me you're a big fan of Wikispaces but find logically organising the student content a perennial problem, 
Live bind binders and wiki spaces might just be the perfect combination as live binders can be embedded. More on that later. Enough now about tabs and subtabs. I hope you can see how useful they can be and how important it is for students to understand how they can help them to sort their stuff. Now on to adding different content. I have prepared several tabs of different content that I want to add to my poetry subtab. This time I'm going to add the media and text content layout option to show you how the media and text options handles different content depending on the source. First I want to add a photo babble to the media section of my layout. To do this, all I have to do is to copy the URL of the photo babble I want to add to my tab and paste it into the enter URL dialog box at the top of the layout section here and then click on the insert button. LiveBinders has now embedded my chosen photo babble into the media section of the page. Now, as a student, I could add my reflections, goals, etc. into the text half of the page. But let's repeat this process with a YouTube video. How does LiveBinders handle a YouTube URL if I repeat the same process as with Photobabble? I have copied my YouTube URL and will overwrite my Photobabble URL. I would expect the YouTube video to be handled in the same way, but it does not. It provides me with a link. I do not like this as links take browsers away from the content and the purpose of the binder is to keep content and viewer in the same place at the same time. Clearly the URL copy and paste option only works for some services. Returning to the YouTube page I will now copy the embed code from the same YouTube video instead. When copied I will return to the text part of the live binder tab, switch to the HTML view which I get to from the yellow down arrow and paste the embed code. I next have to click on the update button and now I get the embedded result I wanted. I hope you can see that there are several ways that content can be embedded in live binders and it is important that students know these skills too. The key is for students not to bounce their viewers all over the internet. Their aim is to bring the internet to the binder and keep their viewers there too. Using this same embed technique and using a different layout option it is possible to put large content items into tabs, such as Prezi's. Here I have selected the single column text option and again will get the embed code from my Prezi and paste it into the HTML view of the text page. Did you know that in the text view, after I have pasted the embed code, that it is possible for me to alter the dimensions in the code to suit my own needs? You try it. Make the width and height of the embed code you paste 800 by 600 and see what happens when you save it. Once you know this trick, you can change the embed code dimensions to suit your own layout needs. Give it a go. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more e-learning tutorials and don't forget to let your colleagues know. These tutorials are for sharing, so please do. Until my next tutorial hits your feeds, Keep practicing!